another down day for stocks, for the S&P uh, at least, the S&P posting its third negative session in a row. So where do you find value opportunities during this bout of volatility? Well, joining us now is Bill Nygren from Oakmark Funds. Bill, it's always great to have you on. Uh, and, and I think what's so interesting to me is the fact that amid geopolitical circumstances, amid stronger than expected economic data here in the U.S., we have seen this run up in oil. But energy stocks, while higher uh, and certainly performing well in terms of sectors for the S&P this year, haven't had the same type of move. Uh, do you still see value there? And if so, where? Well, thanks for having me, Morgan. Always, always nice to be on with you. Um, yeah, we see a lot of value in the energy area. You know, people talk about the S&P 500 trading at a low 20s multiple of earnings. With oil at $85 a barrel or so now, um, most all of the domestic EMP companies sell at single-digit PE multiples. And one that we especially like is APA, the old Apache Petroleum. Uh, this is a stock that is a, among a handful of names that we would say have been left for dead. Uh, it's less than half the price it was at a decade ago. Uh, and unfortunately, at Oakmark, uh, we've owned it for a, a, a long part of that decade. Um, but we see important changes now. In addition to selling at a mid-single-digit PE multiple, you know, the stock is down this year because they announced the acquisition of Callan. And what we really like about that acquisition is most of Callan's wells are adjacent to existing Apache wells. And Apache believes that they can dramatically improve the efficiency of those wells. If they're dead wrong, then the acquisition was done at about the same multiple as APA stock was selling, and it shouldn't be either value additive or destructive. But if they're right, then this acquisition will be a significant boost to APA earnings. And we don't think we're having to take any downside risk uh, in, the, in the hope that that actually does uh, happen. Okay. In a day where we've had a lot of Fed speak, in, including Fed Chair Powell, uh, that I would argue has been tilting a little more hawkish in light of the sticky inflation data that we've been getting in recent weeks and, and recent months, uh, financials are also in focus. It's been something of, dare I say, a mixed bag for the banks that have reported so far, in part because of the higher for longer scenario. Uh, your fund has quite a few financials, not just banks, but quite a few financials uh, as holdings. And just get your thoughts so far, what we've heard in earnings season and whether there's still compelling opportunities there. Well, Morgan, as you know, at Oakmark, uh, we're not too worried about what happens in the next quarter or even the next year. We try to think about a much longer time frame than that. And if you look at the banking industry, over a long period of time, uh, it's not viewed as being as good a business as the average S&P 500 business, typically selling at maybe two-thirds of the S&P 500 multiple. Today, that would be about a 15 times earnings multiple. But if we look at another one of Oakmark Holdings, another that I would say left for dead, uh, Citigroup uh, sells it less than it did a decade ago. It's in the midst of the most significant reorganization they've ever had. Sold off a lot of businesses where they weren't competitively advantaged, uh, have now restructured into five silos that will run almost uh, with the accountability of separate businesses. And they're targeting a return on equity as an intermediate term goal, 2026 of 12 to 13 uh, percent. Book value should be about, tangible books should be about $100 a share by then. So that would be 12 to $13 in earnings, uh, less than five times where Citi is selling right now. So uh, we think Jane Frazier's done a great job. And one of the things we like to look at at Oakmark, you know, the market typically gets really excited when a new CEO steps in, but it takes that CEO a couple of years to get the team in place, get the strategy in place. And by the time everything's about, uh, the, by the time the table's set, Wall Street's giving up on the idea. Uh, Jane's been there for a little over two years now, so uh, we think we're finally ready to reap the rewards uh, from the policies that she's put in place.